Hello there, this is John V, software evangelist at Jscape, and you're watching another Jscape MFD server tutorial. In this video tutorial, we'll walk you through the basic steps of setting up an AS2 server. These are the initial steps that will eventually allow you to carry out EDI transactions with an increasing number of trading partners already using this popular B2B file transfer protocol. Jscape MFD server already comes with a powerful automation feature called Triggers. Triggers enables admins to automate a variety of business processes, making it the perfect solution for carrying out AS2 EDI transactions. The first step is to set up HTTP or HTTPS. AS2 runs over HTTP or HTTPS, so before you start configuring any AS2 settings, you'll need to have an HTTP or HTTPS service up and running on your server. To set up HTTP and or HTTPS, log into the Jscape Empty Server Manager, navigate to Settings, and then Web. This is where you can enable HTTP and HTTPS. Let's just enable HTTP for now. Click the HTTP on host checkbox and select the appropriate IP address and port number. Here, 0.0.0.0, .0, means our HTTP service will be listening on all interfaces. After that, click the Apply button. Once you have your HTTP and or HTTP service all powered up, you can then begin enabling AS2. Go to the AS2 tab and then tick the checkbox labeled Enable AS2. Skip the other settings for now and go directly to the checkbox labeled Bind Unauthenticated Transfers to Domain. Tick that checkbox as well. After that, choose the username of an existing user account and the name of an existing domain where this user belongs. All files or EDI messages received from other AS2 servers will be automatically saved into a folder under this particular user account. By default, the name of that folder would be AS2. Note that the forward slash AS2 that you see here is a relative path that will be located under the bound user account's root directory. This doesn't have to be an existing folder. Jscape MFT server will automatically create this folder for you. As soon as you're done, click the Apply button. Click the Domains tab, and then double-click or edit the domain you specified earlier. In our example, that would be MFT Server 1. Once inside the domain, go to the Services menu and then click the Add button. Select AS2 from the drop-down list and then click OK. When the next screen pops up, click OK again. You should then see your newly added AS2 service in the Services tab. The one we have here would be running on HTTP. HTTPS is disabled for now. But of course, in a production environment, you would certainly want your AS2 service running on HTTPS. What you have just configured up to this point are all the basic settings for receiving AS2 messages. We now proceed to discuss the settings that would enable your server to send out AS2 messages. In Jscape MFT Server, AS2 messages are sent via what are known as trading partners. Trading partners are special objects in the Jscape MFT Server environment that encapsulates all the necessary information for connecting to an actual trading partner. If you want to learn more about trading partners, just click the link that appears or click the links in the description. Let's now start setting up our AS2 trading partner. Navigate to the trading partners menu and then click the add button. In a production environment, you likely have multiple AS2 trading partners with each trading partner pointing to a distinct company whom you transact with. Select the AS2 protocol from the drop-down list and then click OK. When the AS2 trading partner dialog box appears, enter the necessary information. This would include the following. Your desired name for this trading partner, for example, AS2 on MFD Server 2 the URL of your trading partner's AS2 service. You need to ask your trading partner for this piece of information. The one you've entered here, where you have HTTP or HTTPS, followed by the IP address, the port number, and then forward slash AS2, 
and then forward slash incoming would be the format of the URL used by trading partner using Jscape MFT server for their ASU service. And because you're using Jscape MFT server, that's also the same URL format you would have to share with any trading partner who would like to connect to your AS2 service. Of course, your IP address and perhaps your port number would be different. You would also need to fill up the from ID field. The from ID can be any alphanumeric value, no spaces, that uniquely identifies where the AS2 message is coming from. Then there's also the to ID. Like the from ID, this can be any alphanumeric value, again no spaces, that uniquely identifies where the AS2 message is being sent to. Note that the from ID and to IDs are required fields. Make sure this to ID value is equal to the incoming AS2 from header for any incoming message from this trading partner. This ensures that the trading partner is a known and trusted connection. What will happen is that when receiving an AS2 message, Jscape MFT server will iterate through available AS2 trading partners to identify a match. If no matching trading partner is found, then the AS2 message will be rejected. In a production environment, you will of course need to enter several other information than just those four. However, this is the bare minimum you need to start exchanging AS2 messages with a test system. Let's uncheck the receipt signature required for now. This will require a digital signature for the MDN message. We won't be needing that requirement for now. After clicking OK, you should see your newly created AS2 trading partner in your list of trading partners. Now that you've configured your server to send AS2 messages to a trading partner, you might want to try sending messages now. Let me first teach you how to send AS2 messages manually. Jscape MFT Server has a built-in feature that allows you to manually send AS2 messages. Let's try it out. Navigate to the AS2 messages menu and then click the send file button. Select the trading partner you created earlier and then browse to a file you want to upload. After selecting the file, click OK. After a few seconds, you should see two new records on your AS2 messages list one for the outgoing AS2 transmission and another one for its corresponding AS2 MDN receipt. Let's zoom in on that a bit. Of course, while it's possible to send EDI messages manually, it's not the ideal way. In order to take full advantage of EDI, EDI messages must be sent automatically. We're going to show you how to do that in our next video, so stay tuned for it. That's it. Now you know how to set up a basic AS2 server for testing purposes.